What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of RIM's latest flagship. This is the Bold 9900. Let's go ahead and see if it's the Canadian company savior. All right, so let me remind you of the specs here of the Bold 9900. First, it's got a larger, the largest on a BlackBerry with a keyboard with a non-sliding form factor, 2.8 inch diagonal screen at the resolution of 640 by 480, 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, 768 megabytes of RAM, five megapixel camera, a little bit on the back with LED flash, but no autofocus. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's got a 1,230 milliamp hour battery and NFC technology, which stands for near field communication. It's a way to transmit data. All right, so as with all my phone reviews, I always start by talking about how the thing does as a phone. No matter what it can do for email or browser or pictures, if it doesn't make good phone calls, not much use to you. Uh, this thing makes absolutely tremendous phone calls and probably has one of the strongest antennas out of any AT&T phone I've tested. Uh, generally, I'm pretty blanketed in uh, HSPA Plus where I am in Southern California. On the Bold 9900, uh, I had five strong bars of service where generally I've got maybe three to four. Uh, I've been using this phone as my daily driver uh, since I got it and actually have not had a single dropped call. Uh, and this is an unlocked unit, uh, unlocked from the Canadian carrier Rogers, but will be identical to what we see launched for AT&T. And there'll be some band difference when we see it on T-Mobile and when we have it on Verizon, which we do have now in the 9930, and for Sprint in the 9930. Uh, so antenna-wise, this thing is absolutely outstanding. The speaker quality is very loud. On previous Blackberries, I was using the 9780. I had had the speaker up at 100. Here, when I had it up at 100, I was almost deaf. Uh, I had to turn it down just about 80. So speaker quality is very loud. Uh, everything on this phone has to do, that has to do with phone calls uh, is absolutely outstanding. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this big old keyboard here, uh, which is gigantic and the biggest keyboard that RIM has ever used. Uh, and I gotta say, my previous favorite keyboard uh, was surprisingly HTC status before. Uh, this guy takes the crown. The keyboard on this phone is absolutely wonderful here. I can go ahead and type things really fast. It just works very well. This is one of those keyboards uh, that you need to try in your hands first to see what it feels like. Uh, there's a lot of tactile response. Everything you loved about the original bold feel of the 9000 is here, just in a bigger form factor. If you type a lot of email, text messages, or IMs, this keyboard cannot be beat. It is hands down the best thing I have ever typed on. In fact, I look forward to replying to emails now and text because it means I get to use this keyboard. That translates to fewer mistakes and quicker, actually much quicker typing. The keyboard is outstanding. I can't say enough for how good this keyboard actually is. Uh, RIM completely nailed it. All right, let's go ahead and talk about speed. I was using a 9780 before this, uh, and that thing was not a speed demon. I can't tell you how many times I'd see the little hourglass or that little sort of black box with the ticker going around it. I used to see that all the time when I was installing an application. It would pretty much lock the BlackBerry. Uh, not a problem here at all. Uh, speed, this thing is really fast. Uh, RIMS included graphics acceleration, which they're calling liquid graphics, uh, which makes for just a very fast browsing experience. Uh, everything just works. Applications load very quickly. When you're downloading applications, thing just, things just open uh, and just work very well. So I go ahead and launch some stuff that I've got here. Let's go ahead and check out uh, Google Maps. Go ahead and launches very quickly, even if it was stored in the background. Uh, and stuff that wasn't stored just launches uh, very, very fast. So I'll go ahead and launch this for the first time, actually. Uh, Flickster with Rotten Tomatoes. And there it goes, uh, up and running. And you can actually use the phone now when you're downloading an application, uh, which uh, is even better. But that's not the only kind of speed that you guys want to see. Uh, let's check out some of the browser speed. So we'll go ahead and take a look here. Here's the mobile version of ESPN. On a BlackBerry of this form factor, check this out. Boom, pinch to zoom. I'm pretty fast pinch to zoom, I might say as well. Uh, scrolling is very, very smooth here. On the back end in OS 7, there's some JavaScript improvement and some better rendering of HTML stuff. Um, but all that translates to is a really surprisingly pleasant uh, black browsing experience. It just works very, very well. Uh, something I've you know, really enjoyed uh, using. Let's go ahead and check out one of the sites that I've been looking at quite a bit uh, in regards to this phone. Let's go ahead and check out Crackberry. Crackberry.com. There we go. 
Uh, and let's see what a website looks like. I've turned off the mobile network here, HSPA Plus, because uh, I'm using this as my phone and I didn't want the phone to ring uh, as, as I was using it. So it loads you know, very quickly. Uh, I've been really surprised with what RIM has done with this browser. You actually have a browser that you can use uh, as opposed to what we had uh, with previous BlackBerry phones. Uh, this is a very competitive browsing experience uh, to what we see on Android, iOS, and WebOS. I know that sounds very weird to hear, uh, and it sounds even weirder to say, but you've got a full functioning browser here, uh, which is surprisingly nice. Uh, RIM, uh, you can tell, did quite a job trying to get this thing to work. Um, so hats off to them. Let's talk a bit about the design because this is sort of a new design here. So you've got a brushed aluminum band all the way across the device. On the bottom here where there's some inductive charging ports, this is actually plastic. Um, so they don't have sort of an antenna gate issue. All the antennas here live at the bottom. So you don't have to worry about them being surrounded by uh, the metal. Well, you'd never be able to tell it's plastic. Actually, I had to really give it a good feel to tell. That aluminum uh, goes all the way around. Uh, on the top of the device where we used to have uh, the mute and lock button. You now just have a lock button, which can be a bit hard to press. You really got to get in there and get it. And the mute button now lives in between the volume controls. Now, I shouldn't be complaining too much. One of the knocks I had on the original design was that I'd push the unlock button too easily. So now it's a little bit harder to push. Uh, you got to be careful what you wish for. Uh, I will say, though, that having the mute button in the middle uh, is a bit confusing sometimes when I'm trying to adjust the volume. I figure top and bottom uh, is what I use, and I end up doing volume up and mute. Something to keep in mind. Uh, it is a very nice looking phone. It's definitely a little bit wider than previous generation Blackberries, uh, but not too bad. If I bring in, for example, the 9780, the phone it replaced, you can really see the uh, thickness difference there. So it's not the um, necessarily the smallest phones, uh, but it's definitely one of the thinnest. Go ahead and see that right there. If we bring in something like, let's say, an iPhone 4 for a thinness comparison. Uh, you can see how thin this device really is. Uh, but that thinness did come with some compromises here. They did remove on the back the autofocus camera uh, with thinness in mind. At least that's what RIM said. Uh, they removed it so they could keep the device um, with this form factor. So no autofocus camera here, guys. The back, it looks like carbon fiber. It was actually woven glass. And we got some sort of soft touch band all the way around it. NFC antenna actually lives right behind this door. Uh, kind of interesting. Go ahead and exit out of here. Go ahead and exit out of my Twitter application. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some OS 7 business, since this is running BlackBerry's OS 7. You've got a few things here. You've got, if I go ahead and tap that, <laughs> uh, you've got voice search, which is great, but I can't see a reason to possibly want to use voice search. We've got this ridiculously awesome keyboard. Uh, in fact, I've never even used voice search uh, on here at all. In fact, let's try using voice search for the first time. I'll try searching for Techno Buffalo. So I'll go ahead and hit it. Uh, I got to accept it first. You can tell I've never used it. Techno Buffalo. Techno Buffalo. And there it is. Kind of neat. Um, so it works. I would never use it because the keyboard's awesome and a pleasure to type on. Uh, but it is there. One thing that's kind of weird uh, is that the default search here is actually Bing. So let me try typing a search term. Uh, I like candy which is true, uh, I do, and boom, Bing is the default search engine on here. I actually had to download a Google search application, uh, so I could go ahead and hit that. Kind of odd, uh, but you can definitely get yourself around it. A uh, quick note, and speaking of Google search, uh, if you do want to sync your calendar, you need to download um, Google's mobile sync application. And you can also download Google Maps, which isn't gonna come downloaded on here. You gotta go to m.google.com uh, to get all of that information. Uh, OS 7 works very well. You've got the icons that look a little bit different, the liquid graphics, uh, the improved web browsing. You've got some integration uh, with BBM and some of the applications here. Uh, nothing that's worth going into that much detail. Suffice it to say that it does work very well uh, and it's very quick. Um, a few things that I didn't want to show on the device that I didn't even know existed and aren't necessarily part of this review, but just very cool little tweaks. Uh, you see up there, I've got my battery indicator. It says 80%. Uh, that is a cool little application. Go ahead and right there. Called Six Tools that I downloaded. Uh, it's also a cool application for taking screenshots, appropriately called Capture It, which lets you take screenshots of anything uh, anywhere in the device. So go ahead and exit out of that in case you want to do either of those. Uh, that's how you would accomplish it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some pictures because there's all kinds of fun stuff to talk about here, especially in regards to multi-touch. We'll go ahead and 
open up that. We'll go ahead and take a look at some of the wallpapers here. How about that one? Pinch to zooming is very smooth. If you've ever seen pinch to zoom on the Torch 1 or on the uh, Storm 1 or the Storm 2, it's not been a pleasant experience here. Uh, really just nicely done. Rim did an excellent job. Uh, the pinch to zooming here in images is just as good as the pinch to zoom uh, on the browser and on other uh, devices. So really just did a very, very nice job here. Let's go ahead and jump into BlackBerry App World. This is where, oh, I don't have the network turned on. Uh, App World, not many apps in there, uh, unfortunately. And that's really one of the knocks on BlackBerry. You don't have the same app support you get on Android or iOS. So you definitely have to live in a limited experience uh, for apps and figure out what's important to you. It will ship with Twitter and Facebook applications, which will integrate very nicely into the OS and notification bar uh, right across the top. But definitely give a search. You can go to your web browser and search for BlackBerry App World and see what apps are there. Uh, one of the ones that I really love is an application right there called WhatsApp. Uh, it's sort of a BBM-esque replacement. It lets you essentially text message folks across platforms, across the country, without having to use really any data intensive stuff or your text messaging plan. So I have friends in Canada where it would cost money to text message or friends uh, abroad. Uh, WhatsApp is awesome. If you try to download it though from BlackBerry App World, it's gonna tell you it's not available for this device. You have to actually go to the WhatsApp website and download it. And that's true with a lot of things on here. You gotta sort of do workarounds, to find the applications that you like. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about battery. This thing is being powered by a 1,230 milliamp hour battery, which is a step down from the just, just about 1,500 milliamp hour battery that we had in the 9780. And boy, do you know it. So I am about 80% right now um, with heavy usage towards the end of the day with two accounts uh, being set up, uh, about an hour to two hours of phone calls, uh, some text messaging in here, and searching for updates on Twitter and Facebook. I am generally down to about 10% come the end of the day uh, around midnight. So I wish we had a bigger battery. I would have maybe gone for a tad thicker device so I could get through a full day. You're gonna look for an external battery or have a cord close by uh, if you're gonna want to use this device. That is a really solid uh, knock on it here. Uh, the camera, you saw a video that I did, link will be down below, uh, showing the camera footage. It looks pretty good for 720p. Uh, and surprisingly, the audio fidelity was awesome. The built-in microphones here on the Bold 9900 are, uh, are really very nice. So this is a test of the BlackBerry Bold 9900 and presumably the same thing as the 9930 as well, the CDMA variant uh, coming out soon. John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, overall, I've been thrilled with the Bold 9900. From a build quality standpoint to a usability standpoint, it's a phone that I like to use. It's a phone that I actually enjoy using. Um, and if that's any testament, this is the phone that's going to live in my pocket. Not this phone, and not any phone running this operating system, which is Android. This is what I'm going to be carrying with me. Uh, I know people say, oh, RIM, RIM's dead. Why use RIM? BlackBerry forever, or uh, iPhone forever, or Android's the way to go. Uh, a phone OS, at least for me, isn't representative of my personality or who I am. Uh, I use what's best for me at the time. I don't have any knock on iOS, and I don't have any knock on Android. Uh, for me, and for the email intensive life that I kind of live, uh, this thing is absolutely outstanding and is very, very hard to beat. From, from a, a fantastic keyboard to now a full capable web browser and a gradually, albeit very slowly, growing app catalog. Uh, I'm encouraged by what RIM has done and I'm encouraged by the future that RIM might have. They continue this sort of incremental upgrades. Uh, the future might not be so bright, but they continue to release phones like the 9900 and hopefully some QNX based phones in the near future. Uh, I think RIM might have a few, uh, a few legs left in this race. So do you guys agree, disagree? This is a phone that you definitely have to look at. Um, if you're on any carrier, it's coming to every single carrier. Some are already out. Uh, really just an outstanding device. And this is going to be my daily driver. Uh, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.